we're going to discover the different steps in the data analytics process. The first step to establishing a data analytics program is to, of course, determine its objectives. And for this, you have to a bit understand a bit what data analytics is. We are trying indeed to you know, get some information from data. And so I think it's, it's very important that you don't just start with the data, that any organization or internal audit department should first you know, really determine what would be useful, what they, they can actually uh, get from the data. Rather than you know, looking at the data and thinking, okay, this is going to be easy to get, let's, let's have this. Unfortunately, I have seen in the past programs that you know, uh, they have different names, it's not always data analytics, but basically they're trying to create some kind of KPIs and they're gonna start with the KPIs that are easy, that they already have rather than the ones that will, will you know, give value to the organization that managers, that senior management will actually use. So I think this is a highly underrated part of actually uh, you know, developing a, a data analytics program and getting the kind of metrics that will be useful for the organization. So determine the objectives of the data analytics uh, program and determine what is wanted from the data analytics. You will, of course, then obtain the data. Now, this is easier said than done. It often, for many organizations, means you know, creating whole ERPs. It might mean you know, creating whole databases. And, of course, you know, it's not just any data that we can use. Let's still remember that the vast majority of organizations are, you know, are not at a level of being you know, fully online or at a level of having information and data in every single one of their activities. Thus, just setting up a program to obtain the data can often mean you know, gigantic you know, infrastructure. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you know, uh, ERP systems and networks and, and, and uh, different softwares to be able to get data that is actually, you know, that actually fits to your objectives of the program. So I can put this in a sentence, obtain data, obtain the data which will fulfill your objectives, but this is a lot more complicated when you actually get to, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty of it, the details of it. Huh? Cleanse the data. You have to understand that, especially for data sources that you know, exist in advance and weren't exactly created for the particular objectives, we're going to have data which is not necessarily so clean. It could uh, contain errors and might be inaccurate. Uh, it might contain, indeed, a lot of duplicates. Uh, my experience is a system which was put in place in a bank, which was put in place extremely quickly, you know, in, in just uh, you know, two, three months, uh, a team came over uh, from uh, the group, they put in place uh, the new system, and we had a system. It was kind of uh, an enterprise resource planning you know, ERP system. The only problem is it was wholly unadapted when the users already started using it. It was already, from the first weeks, kind of an obvious fact that there was many errors and a lot of duplicate data. Just, just to give a little example from, from that, uh, was that a user could select several different categories you know, for, for a certain operation, but the categories were so similar, you know, uh, uh, category A was so close to category B, that you know, frankly, uh, an inexperienced user, or quite frankly, you know, a, a, a normal person, will not intuitively understand which to choose. Think of it a bit like you know, choosing uh, accounting accounts but not knowing whether to choose between you know, 501 or 502 account because they're so similar. The best systems are intuitive. And then normalizing the data. So uh, this is organizing the data in a which it fits the plan analysis and avoids redundancies. 
let's say you are you're putting the data in a certain way that it can be used for your tests. That might mean, you know, if, if you have, uh, say, two identifying columns in, you know, a large database that, you know, might be uh, similar or otherwise confused, you would try to, you know, either separate them or merge them together so that you'd be able to use them for a final analysis. It might mean that if you do not care about a level of detail, which would just, you know, make everything more complicated, you might, you know, take, merge many different categories to, together and just say other, you know, say types of errors, if, if it's an exception report, so that you're, you're not going through the details of everything. If 99% uh, of your mistakes are so-and-so, but 1% is, you know, uh, 50 other categories, you might just call it other, and this is kind of a normalizing way of avoiding, you know, data that you do not need for your final objective, which, you know, I go back to my beginning point is remember your objective. Analyzing the data itself. Use the data collected, cleansed, and normalized to perform the plan's analysis. This is, I would say, nearly the easiest if the preceding steps were well done. Uh, and communicating on the results. So if you've created all of this, you might even have a real-time system, a real-time system being one that can give you the information, you know, immediately. Um, I've worked, uh, you know, I've been working uh, enough time to see, you know, absolutely more uh, batch systems where this comes out, you know, every time either, you know, a batch is run or where, you know, a certain analysis is performed. In any case, communicating the results, which can be understood, and we're going more and more towards graphs and visualizations rather than tables with data. Mm -hmm.